Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back once again. It is me, Malt. So happy to be here with you guys today. I am getting ready to go to church. I haven't changed or anything, but getting ready to go to church and I wanted to do a story time with you guys. Uh, Y'all have been loving these. The views on these are so crazy, uh, which is really encouraging to me because I like telling stories and apparently you guys like listening to them. So if you guys do enjoy it, let me know down below. Leave a like on the video, guys. If we can get like four likes, that'd be awesome. <laughs> But uh, let's go ahead and jump into today's story. So today's story is from um, the summer uh, as a senior. So I believe my senior year of high school, this is the summer either before that or right after it. Um, now, I lived in South Carolina on the lake, Lake Murray. Some of you guys live there um, or have been there before. So I lived there and there's a golf course out there that I used to play golf on a lot. And um, there's this one par three over over by my house, like I could walk to it from my house, where a bunch of people would just hit balls into the water uh, and would leave them, obviously, because they didn't want to deal with it, right? So what I would do is right after the golf course closed at like 6.45, 7 o'clock, something like that, once it was done and everyone was done playing, I would go out to the golf course and I would put on my bathing suit and my like little water boots, and gloves and stuff, um, and I would go and dive for golf balls in the ponds. Now that may sound a little bit weird, but I was looking for ways to make money, and I actually ended up making like two thousand dollars. That's two thousand dollars that summer from selling golf balls. So what I would do is I would go and I would jump into the pond. So it was a par three. So there's a pond. I would get into it, and um, it was probably about waist to chest high, something around there. And I would just like sit down and I would grab with my hands like this and then shake it off and just throw them up onto the green. And guys, y'all would not believe how many golf balls were in these ponds. Like there were legitimately thousands of golf balls. I stood in one spot and just did this and like spread my arms out for probably an hour and there were still balls there. Now I did this all summer. So I would go probably two times a week, two or three times a week, something like that. Um, it was fun because I was golfing a lot then as well. So I got to use the best balls, like Titleist Pro V1s. And they don't really get waterlogged if they're only in there for um, like a couple months. I think it takes a long time for a golf ball to get waterlogged. So um, I would sell them on eBay, like a box of Pro V1s for uh, <laughs> 60 bucks for like 20 of them, which were super easy to find. Um, and things like that, and it was a really, really cool uh, money-making thing for me as a kid in high school who uh, didn't really have a job at that time. I, I was doing that. It was a lot of fun. But uh, one day when I went out to do it, I thought it was just going to be like a normal day. I went out there, and guys, one thing about it was I was always afraid that there would be something in the water because you can't see in it. Like, you'd see turtles. Like, one time I saw this turtle that was legit, like, this big. It was huge. And it was sitting up on the shore, and I was like, uh-uh, <laughs> I do not want that turtle to come anywhere close to me. How scared are y'all of snapping turtles? Snapping turtles terrify me. Like, alligator snapping turtles are one of the scariest looking creatures there are. Look it up. Look up alligator snapping turtle. They're terrifying. They're absolutely terrifying. So, I was always afraid that there was some monster in the water that was going to get me. So, anytime before I would go down, I would hit the top of the water like this. To scare anything, then I'd go down, throw it out, hit the top of the water, go down, just try and make as much noise as I could. Um, and one day I went out without gloves. I don't know why. Um, I wanted to be one with nature. I don't know why I didn't wear gloves. And I was going down, and I reached down into the water, uh, or into the mud, and I swear I got bit by something. I don't know what it was. I still don't know. And I fly up out of the water. My thumb is just like pouring blood, and I see uh, what looks like a bite mark. I still don't even know if I got bit or if there was something sharp in the water. But I fly up out of the water, which is gross, muddy, golf course water, and my thumb's just bleeding. And I'm like, okay, this is not good. And so I have all the golf balls that I had taken out on the shore. So I try and wrap it up, collect all the golf balls, which is probably like hundreds, into this big barrel, throw it in my car. Drive back to my house. I'm like, Dad, Dad, I think something bit me. I don't know what happened, but I'm bleeding. And so we go up to, there's a fire station close by. And you know, fire firemen are ENTs as well. They have to be able to perform medical stuff. Uh, so we go in there, we wrap it up. 
and uh, they're like, yeah, we don't really know what it is, whatever. So then we go to the urgent care for probably like three hours. I don't even really remember it that much. And uh, I, I, got, I didn't get bit by a poisonous snake or anything like that. I wasn't infected, all this kind of stuff. It was just a waste of time. But it was crazy because I genuinely thought that I'd been bitten by something even after I'd like slap the water and see, it, it was terrifying. <laughs> like imagine being underwater being bit by something that you can't see and you're just touching, you're just picking up all these golf balls and then just something sharp owns your thumb. So I was pretty scared, but we got it figured out. I did go back. I did go back. I actually went to a couple different ones. One of them was really cool. It was part of the lake. So the one that I always went in was just a little pond, but there was one that was part of the lake that was clear and my buddy and I would always wear goggles and like a snorkel and we would swim down. That was more like a treasure hunt. That one was a lot more fun. We didn't find as many golf balls out there, but it was a lot more fun. Um, but guys, if y'all are looking for a way to make some money and you live on a golf course, you got to be sneaky about it. You probably want to ask someone that works there. I talked to a couple people that worked at this one. They were fine with it. Um, it is the summertime, so ask and let me know down below if you start doing this because legit, all you got to do is you collect the golf balls. You clean them with a little bit of bleach, not too much. Clean them with a little bit of bleach, take pictures of them, throw them up on eBay, and people buy them, man. I sold so many. It was ridiculous, and the people pay for postage, uh, so it was pretty crazy. But that's going to be it for this story time, guys. Let me know uh, if y'all enjoyed, or if you've even done this. I'm sure some of y'all have collected golf balls and sold them before, but let me, down, let me know down below if you have. If you enjoyed the story, guys, slap that like button for me, and I'll see you guys in the next episode, all right? As always, make sure you keep calm. And your clash on by me. I'll see you guys later. Peace.